Hi everyone. This lesson is all about chemical indicators or substances that change color in different pHs. So chemical indicators are some of the prettiest parts of Regents chemistry. Um, and what we're going to look at are a few examples of those and how we can use their color changes to help us predict what the pH is in a solution of interest. Um, so this ugly looking thing right here is actually an example of a chemical indicator and it's called phenolphthalein. Um, all these little vertices here are actually carbon atoms bonded to one another and also some unwritten hydrogens. And what you're looking at is the fact that phenolphthalein structure looks like this when we're in a solution that has a relatively high concentration of H+, aka an acid. And this particular structure gives phenolphthalein absolutely no color at all. So this is a um, wholly colorless aqueous solution. If we go ahead and change the environment on our phenolphthalein, though, by adding in OH- ions from some basic source, what we start to do is transform the shape of our phenolphthalein. A couple bonds are broken, hydrogen's plucked off. What we end up seeing is a completely new shape for our phenolphthalein molecule. And with a new chemical structure come new properties. And it just so turns out that this particular structure gives our solution a hot pink color. So what we can use phenolphthalein for is to tell us if it's completely colorless, colorless, it's likely to be in a more acidic environment, whereas if it's pink, it must be in a basic environment. And there are going to be lots of rules to help us predict exactly what color different indicators are going to be in a variety of different pHs. And all those rules are listed on reference table M. So we're going to go through and try and figure out how this is used and how we can use color changes to help us figure out pHs of solutions. So I'm going to have table M over here to the side. We're going to look at all six of these different indicators and use um, them as examples to figure out what this reference table is trying to tell us. So our first indicator that we'll look at is methyl orange. It's just another compound that can change color in different pHs. And methyl orange is going to shift between red and yellow. And this middle column here tells us the pH range when it's kind of in its transition period between red and yellow. So what this really means is that if the pH has not yet reached 3.1, so it's 1, 2, 2.9, methyl orange is going to show up as a red compound. So I'm going to put red here on this table to show that this compound is red until we get to a pH of about 3.1. At that point, methyl orange starts going through its transition phase and starts trying to change to a yellow color. And that transition kind of lasts between pH of 3.1 and 4.4. So here is our transition between red and yellow. And anything past 4.4 is going to show up as yellow. So if the pH is 5, methyl orange is going to be yellow. If it's 10, it's going to be yellow. If it's 14, it's going to be yellow. So on this table, all I'm going to do is say that from this point forward, that particular indicator will show up as yellow if it's added to solution. We can use those same rules to figure out what color all these other indicators are going to be. Bromphimol blue has a pH range, color change range of 6 to 7.6. And that shows when it's making its transition between yellow and blue. So anything to the left of 6 is going to be the color on the left, or yellow. So up to 6.0, bromphimol blue is yellow in color. Between 6 and 7.6 is its transition range. So transition. And anything to the right of 7.6, so 7.6 and up, bromphamol blue changes a nice blue color. So it's kind of nice that this starts changing to blue right around neutral pH. This is a very useful indicator to tell whether or not you've got something acidic or something basic, because it will be either yellow or blue. So we'll add that to our table here, that above 7.6, this guy is blue. We can use the same rules to help us figure out, again, for phenolphthalein, when it will change colors. Any pH below 8 
is going to show up with the color on the left. So eight and below phenolphthalein is completely colorless. Just looks when you add it, it looks like water. It starts to transition between pH eight and nine, and it transitions to a hot pink color. So this is a great indicator to tell whether or not you've got a base on your hands. Litmus is often um, just like a little strip of paper that will either be red or blue. So anything below a pH of 4.5, we're gonna have the litmus color be red. So we'll put that on our table that it's going to be red below pH 4.5. The transition phase for litmus is relatively large. So you really wanna know if something is very acidic or much more on the basic side. So when we hit 8.3, that's when litmus is gonna be able to turn blue. In our last two, we've got bromcresol green, anything to the left of 3.8 is going to show up as yellow. We'll transition between 3.8 and 5.4 to a nice blue color. You can see the color change there is very similar to bromphenol blue, but the range over which it changes is slightly different. Same deal goes for thymol blue. Below pH 8.0, that compound is going to be yellow. Between 8.0 and 9.6, it's going to be slowly changing to a blue color. So once we hit 9.6, it will be fully blue. And we can use these color change ranges um, to help us figure out exactly what um, predictions we might make for indicator color or just for what pH we have on our hands. So if you take a look at these two examples at the bottom of the page, vinegar has a pH about, of about 3.0. If I add a drop of bromthymol blue to a sample of vinegar, I wanna know what color it's going to be. Well, we can use our table here to help us, or again, just look at table M. If we go up to bromthymol blue, if the pH is 3.0, that's when bromthymol blue is still yellow. You can do this just by looking on table M as well. pH 3.0 would be, if this was a number line, sort of off to the left of six, right? Because it hasn't hit six yet. So it's gonna be the color on the left. So we can predict at 3.0, we're still in our yellow territory. The next uh, question is asking us to identify a pH range where methyl orange would be yellow and phenolphthalein would be colorless. Well, if methyl orange is yellow, I'm gonna go over to table M now, because this is what you're gonna have on tests and whatnot. If methyl orange is yellow, that's the color to the right. So we need to be to the right of this color change range. So that has to be a pH above 4.4. So if methyl orange is yellow, that's pH 4.4 and up. If phenolphthalein is colorless, again, we'll look at table M. Colorless is the color on the left, so we've gotta to be to the left of this color change range. So we need to be below a pH of eight. So phenolphthalein would be colorless at 8.0 and below. So if both these statements are true, we must be between pH 4.4 and 8.0. We could use other indicators to help us get a more precise guess at what the pH of that solution would be, but that's how you use indicator color predictions or for pH range predictions.